All right, boys, here we are. We are uh, recording in our COVID-powered metaverse. Wow. We're back. Yeah, here we are. We uh, are with our little video screens here. We're seeing each other in our own little humble homes. And, yeah, the uh, webcams uh, help, actually. The, web- the webcams do help. When I can actually see your faces, it makes it so much easier to do this. I mean, once I start reading, I will see nothing but words, but it's good to know you guys can see me at least. Yeah, and it's just good. To, I haven't seen you guys in like a week in, in a little bit, so it's good to see you. It's true. Yeah, your yeah. hair's outlandish. You got some Jack Nance eraser head <laughs> shit happening right now, and I love it. I love everything My- about it. <laughs> I believe That's you said I, I had rheumatoid. I had rheum- yeah. r- you rheumatoid. You got knee fever and rheumatoid hair. You <laughs> yeah, fucking I- <laughs> up. <laughs> I'm You're currently... next on the list, man. I'm, I'm rooting for you. We're gonna get like money together to pay for the hospital bills. You're gonna be all right, buddy. I think I'll be okay. Uh, we are. We are currently, obviously, recording here remotely uh, due to a COVID outbreak in my house. <laughs> if you <will>. yeah. <laughs> literally fucking yeah, a, sec- a secondary breakout, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, the the Tertiary? first break. Yeah. The well, the, the first breakout was my wife, and then she, you know, she's fine. Everything's good. She's back to work. And then my son, uh, my daughter is fine. But now I was telling the boys I'm feeling a little achy. My leg, I got, I got the knee fever. I got the rheumatoid hair. <laughs> so, oh no, man, your boy Mark might be going down. I don't know. You're fine, oh, dude. We'll, we'll You're see. a survivor. Hey, man, you know, I, I managed to see the Bills fucking just crush the Patriots in that last game. So I guess it's all worth it in the end. Oh right? my god, you have works. got to dream bigger, buddy. <laughs> Oh, uh, welcome to the Kryptonaut Podcast. My name is Mark Storrs, and I'm joined by Mr. Chris Carnicelli. Hi. And Rob Morphy. There it is. Should I do Robert Thomas Morphy the second? You could. Okay. Well, I'll let's just stick for now. Maybe next time we do that, we'll do Robert right. Thomas Morphy. Both are valid. I mean, it's solid either way. Okay. Yeah, well, that's true. I, just, I like putting that number on there, Robert Thomas yeah, Morphy. The Roman the numeral. Okay, it's calm a, it's down. A nice <laughs> Uh, yep, I'm definitely getting fevery. So, Robert, let's do those oh, shout outs no. for Patreon for people that like to support us monthly monetarily. Yes, indeed. Sweet. Beginning with Seth Skeen. Hell yeah, Seth. Thank you so much. Ty Ormond. Ty, what up? Joe Castelletti. Hell yeah, Joe. Joe Castelletti. I know. It's really definitely a mobster for <laughs> yeah, sure. Totally. Christopher Cavello. Thank you, Christopher. Quinn Crawford. What up, Quinn? Mm. The surgeon. No. (laughs) Emily Smalter. Yeah, what up, Em? What's going down? The ink and the black. The ink and the black. Okay. One word. I'm all about it. Ink and the black. What up, up, ink and black? D-Rod. Yeah, D-Rod. I love it. Lancer win. Oh, buddy. Shit. Lance. We know Lance very well, and we have some things coming up that we can't talk about, but check out Lance Irwin. He, yeah, is, fucking, he is the fucking dope yeah, shit. Yeah, look out for 2025. We got some <laughs> oh. Dude, you're giving us... Oh. <laughs> come on. It's like oh, more on. like 2029. What are you doing, that's, dude? That's true. <laughs> I'll have COVID the fourth time by then. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Come on, guys. Uh, okay, next <laughs> next uh, patron's just a dick. You're a dick. Oh, this is a big one. Uh Miodrag Bogosavljevic. Oh, I just murdered your name. I mean, we're Yo, sorry. Miodrag Bogoslavjevic. Mio. Mies. So sorry, but. Yeah, no. You know, you're going to get a new one. Just you, phonetic the fuck out of that for me because Eastern European shit yeah. looks awesome, sounds awesome, but from my mouth is a nightmare. Just record it and send it to me as a wave file, and then, <laughs> and then we'll just play it for Bobby and all of yeah, us. Yeah, right. We'll talk about him. You're it not really a dick, Mio Drag. All right, drag. I don't know, but you <laughs> are making my mouth hurt. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> Moving on to Aaron the fucking Andrews. Oh shit, the fucking Aaron of the Andrews. What up? Thank you all so very much for your continued Patreon support. We appreciate it. You're keeping us all uh, gainfully employed, right? Over here, we're doing it. You're keeping yeah. it real. Yeah. You're keeping us fucking going and functioning. And, uh, you know, thank you for everything. Totally. Totally. Uh, so before we get started real quick here, uh, we do have a special birthday shout out going to our boy Huckleberry Blue over there on the Discord. He is one of our uh, moderators there. And, uh, you know, as a part of his birthday, he wanted a shout out, but he also wanted a dank shout out for his fellow admins and moderators on our Discord channel. So we got Hackity. What up, Hackity? We got oh, yeah. Literal Jesus. What up, Literally what? Jesus? Which is a great fucking screen name. <laughs> <It's phenomenal. laughs> yeah, well, literally it's Literally Jesus. Jesus. Like, you can't really... 
Yeah, he, yeah. You and can't our, debate uh, it. I mean. Yeah, no, he's literally Jesus. And of course, our super producer, Bone Daddy, Mr. Noah Cappadocia. Thank you all so very much for your help over there. And again, happy birthday, Huckleberry Blue. We uh, we appreciate what you're doing over there. Hope you have a great birthday. Fucking A-right. And uh, this week, without further ado, we're going to get started here once I pull up my notes. Oh, Robert, when I got this email, I was super excited to read this. So I'm just going to cut to the chase here. Straight from hell. The Winged Things of Butler County. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Uh, all right, let's get started with, in the 21st century, citizens of Butler County, Pennsylvania, claim to have encountered at least two truly bizarre winged monstrosities in their bucolic backyards, forcing some to wonder if these humanoid entities might be magical creatures of lore or something infinitely more diabolical, a beast that multiple eyewitnesses claimed was straight from hell. Straight from hell. Whoa. Be a great spaghetti Western title. 100%. Be a great spaghetti dish. Straight from hell. I can't believe it's not. (laughs) Spicy. It'd be the extra spicy of meatball. It's definitely from balloons. (laughs) Oh my God, yeah. The rattlesnake pasta. (laughs) Let's just make fettuccine Alfredo and dump half a bottle of Cajun spice. Thank you. And I love it. All right, there you are, boys. What do we got going on in Butler County, We're going back to the fucking Commonwealth. We were just there with some Pennsylvania pandemonium. Oh, we were. But Stan Gordon is back, and we're going going, uh, at it from another angle. Because I mean, while we don't know what's below Pennsylvania, we do know what's in Pennsylvania, and it's nobody fucked. does. Yeah, no one really does. A lot of people fake it. It's Good theoretical. It's all theoretical. Really? Yeah. Is. There's a Carolina it, it's down there somewhere. String theory, right? Yeah. Until you hit the Carolinas. And then and there's Delaware. a Florida. There's a Florida somewhere too. But whatever, we'll figure that out. I'm not even sure if that's real. I first stumbled across these strange sightings in author, ufologist, and Fortean investigator Stan Gordon's Astonishing Encounters, Pennsylvania's Unknown Creatures Casebook Number 3, which happened to be a gift from uh, our newest member of the crypto crew, Cole Harold. So thank you, Cole, for that. In Chapter 5, appropriate, appropriately excuse me, titled Really Bizarre Creature Encounters, Gordon mentions a pair of odd run-ins with two very different creatures who have nothing in common save for the fact that they are both vaguely humanoid, they both have wings, and they both hail from within the 795 square miles of Butler County, which is located approximately 40 miles north of Pittsburgh in west central Pennsylvania. But I I speak uh I speak in lies because it actually oh. happens within a 10-mile stretch. Butler County is 795 oh. square miles, and that's fair. Okay. But let's just narrow that shit right down. It's a tiny little stretch in which All right, and you got happen. some some winged flying shit. All right. It's dope. There it now is. here's something that's interesting. And so I'm I'm interested to see how Chris feels about this. Mark and I had this debate before we started. Oh. I thought that we had done this before, but I wasn't sure when or how. Mark, who has an uncanny memory for all of this thing, you can just mention like it's got three dicks and an eyebrow, and he's like, oh no, episode whatever. He knows <laughs> he what's loves going multiple on. dicks. That's he does. Who does? <laughs> I he mean, that. yeah, I do. I totally do. Now Mark I mean, says this didn't happen. <laughs> dicks ahoy yeah <laughs> um i'm not sure chris it'll be up to you and if we're doing it twice maybe the patrons got a taste of this then all the better if not well rock out it's a fascinating case all right well we'll see if my I, uh, it doesn't i don't recall this do you think we did it for a patreon maybe Okay. Maybe, or maybe I mentioned it in um co- in the context of another case, but n- didn't have all the details. I don't know. That is true. There'll be some keen-eared listener that will tell me if 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 this is our first double dip. If not, hey, what the hell? Do Patreon like I kind of know the normal pods we did, but Patreons are I have no fucking. I oh, it's like a fever did. dream. I don't know Patreon. what we did last week. I don't know what happened yesterday. <laughs> no, Mark just had to remind me. I'm like, what did we? Oh, I don't know wh- where I was ten minutes ago, dude. The <laughs> fuck, where was I? How did was you? I how home? could you forget the asperomancer? Come on. Oh no, I, of course. Yeah, we know all about the future. Okay, well now that you mention it, but <laughs> all right, there you go. <laughs> you have to all mention right. it first. Perfect. So either way, we're we're, we're doing what we're doing. Our first account hails from 2005 and involves a diminutive feminine butterfly winged being that would seem to be more at home flitting around the peaks and turrets of Disneyland's iconic Sleeping Beauty Castle than in a random yard in northeastern in the northeastern United States. 
But that is evidently just what happened. According to the account, which was originally published on Phantoms and Monsters, the primary eyewitness, Jonathan Fennell, his girlfriend and a group of buddies were enjoying each other's company on a back deck when they would come face to face with an unknown entity, which Gordon would dub the Butler County Ferry from Fennell's written testimony. Quote, in the summer of 2005, I had a very unusual sighting, yet it was almost something of a blessing to witness, especially having such high hopes for such an existence. Myself and an entire group of people witnessed a fairy close up. Nobody knew what to say. So I guess this is something you'd always hope okay. for and dreams come true. Hopes yeah. and dreams, <laughs> hearts and hands. No doubt. It started with a phone call from a friend inviting me and my girlfriend at the time out to his parents' house in the country areas of Chickara. And I'm adding in a, uh, a parenthesis here, that is a borough in Butler County sporting just about a thousand people. Back to the uh, Fennel story. We accompanied a gathering of about seven or eight of us in total. It was a casual evening, nothing crazy, and no drugs to induce any hallucinations. That's always a plus. Okay. Boo. <laughs> Boo. Whatever. Don't judge. We Boo. sat on his parents' back porch as the sun set behind the trees. It was a nice house set in a thick wooded area and carried on conversation amongst friends. Night came, and nothing much else changed. This sounds too wholesome. It's it's like Big Chill, though. I've never actually seen that movie. It's like, uh, I guess, um, mid-20s uh, Stand By Me. I, I don't know. I'm sure there's a movie that is that, but I didn't watch that one either. St. Elmo's Backyard? I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. St. Elmo's Backyard, my favorite. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. This porch was more of a deck. An important <laughs> distinction. Not for the story, but just in general. <laughs> this is not a porch, Deborah. It's a fucking deck. Oh my Stop. God, Deb. God damn it. It was roughly 10 by 15, which was a nice spread for all of us to gather around a table on. To the far side of the deck, which was right across from where I was sitting, my friend's mom had a huge pile of pots and plants that rested against the railing of the deck and the house, all of which sat right under the spotlight for the deck. So our area, the deck, <laughs> parentheses, <Okay. laughs> was very clearly visible in the dark. At this point, it was probably around 10 p.m. considering that it was almost pitch black outside. Suddenly, during one of those odd quiet moments in conversation, we heard a pot tink as if it were lightly bumped. Being out in the woods in the dark, all of us turned to see what kind of animal was spying on us. To our surprise, as we all turned to look, and mind you, I had a front row seat the whole time, we saw what looked like either an enormous moth, and I've seen big moths, but this thing was more like a squirrel size, or rather large bat, shoot straight up from the pile of pots. However, this thing obviously had wings that were wrapped around its body like a tortilla. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> but I threw a burrito over the fence. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. The, the squirrel fucking, burrito fucking pops burrito up from fairy. behind the pots. Yeah, take that shit for free, <gasps> man. Burrito <Yeah>. fairies. <laughs> you burrito just fairies. changed my religion with one sentence. Go. Fucking love that. <laughs> okay. But I immediately noticed something that blew my mind. A human head with extremely long pointed ears, almost as if they were to be disguised as antennas. So the burrito bat <laughs> with the fucking human ears that are so long, they look kind of like antennas or antennas that look vaguely like ears. Honestly, I don't think we can rest the case on this yet. I mean, when okay. you're on a porch and you're being wholesome and that's what happens. Yeah. Hallucinogenic free. Yeah. There you go. However, there was no human hair on this creature. So it shot straight up from the pile of pots. But what happened next totally threw all of us again in a spin. Excuse me. It reached its maximum quote unquote launch height and hung suspended in midair for about half a second when suddenly its wings burst open to into a full spread right in front of the porch spotlight. I could not believe what I was seeing. It was a perfect, slender, human female body with wings attached along the entire side of its body, from fingertips to toes, and then some. 
Her body was solid and silhouetted against the light, but her wings resembled the skin of an earlobe, almost like bat wings. So what we'll post with this and what you can uh, check out now, guys, if, if you want, I'm sorry, I didn't send it. There's an eyewitness sketch of this thing. And you can basically see what looks like um, the, uh, the you know, Da Vinci's Etruvian man. I, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but like arms stretched out, yeah. like stretched mm-hmm. out, but with like sort of um, a combination of a moth and a flying squirrel kind of skin attached around it. Huh. With a human head and these like really slender, curving um, a- antenna, it's really you know beautiful. Mm. Not not any facial features given or anything like that, but it's really a fascinating kind of image. So we'll post it so the folks can follow that. You know, so it's following kind of the our very often mentioned Beastmaster protocol. With the weird fucking skin mummy demon vampire Just, things. Yeah, not a scummy, but yes, right. as much as I yeah. love those no, there's creatures. there's a solid female body there, so there you go. And so the, the body's solid, but okay. the, the wings are translucent as, you know, evidently thinner. Uh, okay, sounds weird. It's gross. No, it would make sense. I mean, a bat's yeah. wings aren't as thick as its torso. That's yeah. not weird. That's just biology. Okay, well, I'm not big into biology, dude. All right, fair enough. There it is. Wow. Right. Back to the story. Now, biologically, see, the author of the story is. Oh, boy. Big words. I'd say she had the body density and weight of a good-sized squirrel. Okay, (laughs) sure. That's how I judge most weights of things. (laughs) How many squirrels? That's like, that's at least 28 squirrels there. Yeah, that That, guy is about uh, 37 and a half squirrels. 37 and a half. (laughs) I'm going to give him seven out of 12 models. He's got a a big squirrel. I measure everything in cubits and squirrels. I don't know about you guys. (laughs) That's the only way. They hate me at the Home Depot. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I use pizza pretty much. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> About one foot in height and the body proportions and body proportions that seemed identical to a human. The wings were so oddly beautiful in design, the way they attached to her body and stretched at full wingspan, which she had to do by opening both her arms and legs to get this full effect. Now, there's the next part that just doesn't make sense. Like I said, when she first shot out of the pots, she hit a high point where she was suspended in midair for about half a second and burst open in an instant to reveal her truly graceful form, which, again, she hung in midair for another half second, making it an overall 1 to 1.3 seconds of (laughs) hang time. I tried to be so accurate with timing because I am an animator and it's all about timing. See, now that's one of those rare cases where a lot of people, when they say like, how far was this thing away in the sky? If you tell me you're a pilot, I'm like, all right, maybe you're a decent judge. If you tell me you were able to measure it in nanoseconds, I'm like, what the fuck? And then you tell me you're an animator. I'm like, oh yeah, no, you would be Uh, able to do this. All right. Well, it's one of the few professions where literally you time things to like minuscule portions of a second. True. Okay, so 1 to 1.3 seconds of hang time. But after she showed herself in this full spread form, as heavy as she seemed to be, having the seemingly biological makeup that I des- that I observed, she defied gravity and fluttered right over top of the table, over the top of all of us, about four feet above the table, and off the deck and into the woods. From point A, the pots on the porch, to point B, the woods, she probably fluttered for about seven to ten seconds. It was dark outside, so once she left the confines of the porch, she left the radius of the light that we could see in from the spotlight on the porch. I'm sorry, I'm just reading this verbatim, so the language is a little iffy sometimes. She was gone in an instant once she crossed the, that line. I assume the lighting line from the, you know, the overhead lamp there. All of us sat silent for about 30 seconds, jaws wide open until someone burst into holy shits. Yes, that's right. Plural shits. (laughs) Plural shits. Holy shits. (laughs) Totally valid. Let the pants shitting begin. (laughs) And the sort. So apparently everyone was swearing at this point. We all fumbled for an explanation for about five to 10 minutes. This dude really is into timing before we all just decided to accept what we saw. A fairy. Not one of us thought it was anything else. Like Just, I said, it for one split second while wrapped up in its wings resembled a giant moth or bat. But I could see that human head and instantly knew it was 
a humanoid. And once she opened her body to reveal her true form, there was no mistake. It was a real life fairy. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, I like that at the end of the conversation, like, all right, we all agree it was a fairy. And it's then she's like, that's their night. They're like, all right, let's get some pizza and call it a fucking, let's wrap this up. Yeah, let's play yeah, What do you do from <laughs> that moment on? I don't know. I, I mean, I just, I guess you go maybe look for it or maybe go back to where it came from to be like, oh, maybe there's a nest of fairies over here and kind yeah, of you got to check for a fairy nest. Smoke or them fairy out. Fairy eggs. Smoke, smoke them out of their hole, dude. Or glow bats. Smoke them out. Smoke, smoke them out of their holes, holes, dude. Yeah. yeah, no, that's legendary fairy hunting technique. Smoke. I mean, out of the or hole. just go over and kick the pots and see if no, anything else flies come on, out. No, no. You're just kicking the pot. It's, you're, you're better not, than You're not that. kicking the fairy. You're just kind of kicking its little. If home. there's a fairy leaning against the pot, you have therefore kicked the fucking fairy. Uh, you're just okay. N- lightly nudge. You guys love kicking. That's shit. kicking by proxy. Yeah, no, light. Like thank you, Chris. Lightly nudge <laughs> the fucking. The if you see, and see if, if you see a puppy up. on the other side of a fucking, I don't know, a tin can, and you huck your foot into the tin can, you're <laughs> kicking the puppy. Christ, no one would ever stop kick a kicking tin the can fairies with man. a fucking puppy behind it. You fucking animal! How dare you? Oh, oh yeah, fairy kickers, you. fucking phenomenal. And you know what? They are <laughs> fucking Christ. dangerous creatures, as we all know. So let's not fuck around. All right. A, so bring, I don't know, bring whole, bring porridge and graham crackers and honey, and be like, oh please. Please don't fucking whatever oh, oh, and fucking. So they're Oliver them. Twist now. Jesus <laughs> yes, fucking. Exactly. You know nothing yeah, yeah, of fairy lore. Though, who doesn't like they're, porridge and honey in all fairness? I really don't know anything about fairies. If someone obviously. brought me porridge and graham crackers and honey, I mean, I'm not really sure what porridge is. If it was something like cream of wheat, I think I'd I be think really happy. I'd be okay with that. I'd be like, oh, this is warm and sweet and hearty. Thank you. Isn't that what you're supposed to do is like bring them them gifts so they don't fucking And then kick them? Yeah, sure. That's exactly how you do it. Oh, forever the guy that kicked the fairy. No, you just kicked it home. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say get a rock, but I didn't want to fucking go there yet. So not yet. It's 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 coming. It's it's, it's on the way. Oh, yeah. It's coming. I love it. I, I mean, I wish we were part of this posse in 2005. It would have been a game changer. Uh, All yeah. right. <laughs> so I don't know what happened, how many pots were kicked, but to continue with uh, Jonathan's story, about an hour later, my girlfriend and I left my friend's parents' house and headed home. The whole ride home, we could not stop speaking of what we saw and how it altered our perception of reality and the unknown or lost magics of this world. Oh, I've never magics. heard it put that way. No. But okay, yeah, yeah it makes sense. Yeah. Like, if you never thought fairies were anything but like shit you saw, you know, in the opening credits of the wonderful world of Disney, if you're ancient like me or, you know, you know, books or, or cartoons or whatever. And then suddenly there you would be like, maybe a lot of the other ancient magics of this world that, you know, are chalked up to fantasy like Merlin and whatnot, maybe there's some substance to it. So I can, I can get where he's coming from. Dude, ancient magics, dude. But it is. Jonathan continues. <laughs> when I'm sorry, you the way you just said ancient magic, dude, it just made me laugh. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> when I you are not fucking dying. I'm gonna I, use ancient magics on you. You're gonna be seriously, fine. Seriously, I have such a temperature, I think. <laughs> Help. I hear you, dude. Uh, you got the COVID. Great. <laughs> I, I know. Might, I don't know. I got a terrible cold too, but you're not you're not dying, buddy. Oh, We're not dying. We're all living. Oh god. Chris, carry on for us. Go. Go yeah, bills. I will. Go Bills. God damn it, dude. When I was younger, Jonathan continues, I used to spend most of my time in solitude in the forests and wild areas that people rarely tread. I would hear music coming from the streams and whispers in the wind. Things that poets write of, but these things I truly heard and felt. In time, as I grew older, I became involved in quote unquote, man's world. <laughs> And okay. Wait, weren't this, you born into man's world there, guy? We're all like, kind of born into the world. Yeah. I mean, I get what he mean, man's world, but it's just a funny way of putting it. <sighs> and I feel that the sixth sense, if you will, has slowly faded from my being, which breaks my heart to think about, especially knowing that magic and beings of lore still do exist. Do not ever stop believing and never turn your head from nature. That is when you stop seeing and that is the end of Jonathan's story. Now, full disclosure, we all get a little sense of the wackadoo towards the end. I mean, I get it. You can hear the tinkling of a fairy harp in a stream, I guess. I spent a ton of time <laughs> alone in the woods. <laughs> I, I hear didn't... death metal in the woods. Yeah, yeah, really. It's what I hear. I hear black metal in the woods. I hear That's Mortis I hear. flapping his wings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, 
Every I hear the fucking what was it? It's been ten ten long years since I smelled the witch. Oh my God. Is that what it was? <laughs> yep. Smell the uh, witch, dude. Dude, there were there was the the witch song, and then there was the fuck. What was the one where he's on the beach? Uh, fucking uh, parasite, parasite. I'm surfing mortis. Yeah. That's what it is, too. Is that really what it's called? Oh, my no, fucking God. No, surfing You just made me so ride. happy for a second there. You have no idea. <laughs> it's it's just the Beach Boys, but with fucking Mortis. Dude, I have been listening <laughs> yeah. to like the cramps and all sorts of like 80s surf punk all week. It's just been like a hole I fell into. When you told uh, me there was a surfing Mortis, I was like, yes, everything <laughs> comes together now. Dude, it's yes. fr- Frankie Valley and Mortis. <laughs> oh, this, oh, I love it. <laughs> oh fucking mortis where are you (laughs) no doubt come back okay so here's um here's what stan gordon had to say following this specific testimony i first learned of this strange encounter that you just read about after seeing it on lon strickler's phantoms and monsters website in 2012 as we mentioned earlier I then contacted the man who wrote the story. I found the case of interest since in the last few years, other people have contacted me with similar accounts of having seen what they believed were also fairies in Pennsylvania. You got to remember one thing. Anyone who doesn't know about Stan Gordon's work, not only is he one of probably the world's foremost authority on the Kecksburg UFO crash of 65, but this man's like the king of paranormal Pennsylvania. Like yeah, he, sure. he lives there. He works it. If it happened in Pennsylvania and it's fucking weird, Stan Gordon is the man you'd fucking talk to about it. So go. if he says there's other fairy accounts in Pennsylvania, you, you take heed. So then he, so he goes on to say, I'm sorry, I lose my place when I, I have to, I have to look away from a book to talk. Cause apparently I'm a moron. <laughs> I also found it of interest that the incident occurred in Butler County where there's been a long history of various types of strange creature encounters. That's interesting. I don't know much about that. The witness in a more recent communication told me that the small flying being he observed had very short and sparse white hairs evenly distributed and covering the entire body. That's an interesting note. Hmm. The creature, which had thin fleshy wings, appeared to have a tinted green complexion, which could have given it the illusion of the light glow underneath the very short white hairs covering the being. So, a, a glowing bio, may, maybe bioluminescent green pigmented epidermis with fine white hairs on top of it, which could still uh, be sort of insectoid though. No insects are shaped like pinup models. As far as I know, I mean, right. could be a sexy moth. You never know. Could be a sexy moth. Yeah. Fuck, I, I mean, sexy moth man is a thing. Moth or oh, moth sexy woman. Moth sexy man, moth that's person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. well, I'm not going to deny its existence sexy and I'm not going to say that it's pretty hot. But I'm not going to say it's not. You're saying it's hot. I am definitely saying it's hot. See in your eyes. The witness also commented concerning his experience, quote, I believe that what I, what I saw that day was something that we as a people are having difficult, difficulty jiving with for a lack of a better term. I think maybe he meant jiving. I'm not sure. Let's just go with it. I don't know if it. If it was some form of interdimensional being, if it was some kind of magical creature, or if it was just some sort of physiological creature that has managed to elude mankind with the slew of other creatures throughout our supposed history on this planet. Oh, End quote. Yeah. So, I mean, he's at least broad, broad-minded enough, Jonathan is, to say, you know, maybe it's, we do this all the time. It's magical, it's interdimensional, or it's just a really rare form of fauna that like so many other cryptids manages to fucking tuck and hide. So you barely see it until it decides to tink the pots and make a fucking big old display of itself in front of the whole goddamn deck party. And it's a deck, (laughs) not a porch, Deb. No, goddamn it, Deb. I mean, maybe we're dealing with a really slow rod. (laughs) Could be. I mean, it doesn't have like 1100 sets of wings going down its tubular body. We all lived through the big rod era. We did. We all remember. So yeah, dude, dude, the rod craze of the mid 2000s. (laughs) <laughs> it, was, it was it was right after the the whole orb explosion where i got sucked into yeah. orbs i'm like it's all oh, spirits of the dead there's at least Ooh, i know 400 of them behind me in dust the field. and bugs changed the paranormal <laughs> landscape for a full three years As did and then Rods. we got out of it thank yeah, god they sure did 
I was totally right. into rods for a while. I was like, oh my God. Me too. They're so fast. No one can record them unless you have like video. Your eyes can't see these impossible yeah. creatures. And I was I was delighted until I realized, oh yeah, artifacting, dude. You know about uh, cameras. Whatever yeah. happened to rods, dude? Well, but like high speed cameras got good. Too, though. They were well, sort of dope. And I remember in the 90s, I was definitely like, well, what the fuck? But then once really you saw people could do a hell of a job with like a plank and a rope and a, you Well, know, that, that was the problem. There, like the footage was, so there's some footage that was really well done. And you just, that was really before uh, everything on the internet was a lie. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. And everyone had access to CGI. But it was yeah. just convenient that, you know, there's a camera on a field and then all of a sudden there's glowing lights. Orbs. And just, and it, why were you filming an empty fucking field? Like, that's for 10 true. minutes for nothing. Yeah, just looking for the Exactly where the crop circles, circles And yet I still read happened. some people talking about that as legitimate footage. And I can't swear. I, like, I wouldn't bet my life it's a lie, but I would bet a significant portion of my non existent fortune that it's a fucking piece of yeah, fake fucking footage. Yeah, a couple footage. nickels. <laughs> Yeah, no. 15 cents. Oh, uh, yeah, 15 cents. Maybe, maybe even up to seven, <laughs> seven bucks, 42 cents. I would really throw yeah, it maybe. out hard that that will shit you, was big. Will you bet your monthly cut from T Public, which is supposed to be here on Friday? That yes, because that, it might that be footage a couple, is it, fake. Yes, it might be a couple of nickels. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. T Public with their big payout. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Sweet. Wow. All right. Hey, well, you know, right, well, hey, people are less cold than they were because they're wearing our T-shirts. Hey, I'm stoked they have it. It's just man, T Public. Wow. God damn. Whew. I'm glad we're keeping them afloat. Holy Get shit. Get it together, people. <laughs> Not you guys. Them. <laughs> them. <laughs> Come on, T Public. All right. Okay. So moving on from sexy moths. Cool. 10 miles, 10, 10 miles mile stretch. Radius. There you go. The next encounter reported in the same chapter of Gordon's book also took place in Butler County a few years later on March 18th, 2011, and just a few miles away on a stretch of country road that ran between Chicora, where the fucking sexy moth was seen, and East Brady. East Brady uh, is about 10 miles to the east, hence the 10 mile stretch there. Here is Gordon's written report of the quote unquote mysterious winged creature that was seen by multiple observers over the course of just a few days. On March 21st, this is Gordon's words now, I was contacted by a witness who reported having an encounter with a very strange creature during the early morning hours of March 18th, 2011. The incident occurred on a rural road in Butler County between Chicora and East Brady. The witness, a businessman passing through the area, stated that, quote, this was the freakiest thing I ever saw, and it made my hair stand up on the back of my neck and probably gave him rheumatoid hair, as we know. Oh, is that what happened to me? That's how I got my rheumatoid what hair? What did you see, Mark? Share. We're all friends. I've fucking been inside since last week. I haven't seen shit. What did you see through the window? I, my wife coming home from work today. <laughs> and I was like, Fuck you. I want to get out of the house. <laughs> Fuck. The man told me that he was driving down, and I'm going to apologize again. My voice is going to keep fucking cracking and doing weird shit. That he was driving down the road when he was about a quarter mile away. He observed something on the right side in a grassy area. His first thought was that it was a deer. The driver stepped on the gas to move closer to get a better view. From about 50 yards away, he observed something that appeared to be hunched down and then stood up. The driver then observed a very tall, muscular creature. At this point, the driver had his high beams on and watched as the creature walked in front of a yellow reflective road sign, then crossed the two-lane road in three long steps and continued into a wooded area. What he saw was a humanoid figure that stood at least eight feet tall and appeared to have smooth leather-like skin that was either a dark tan or light brown color. So we're going on the other end of the spectrum here. <clears throat> Leathery, eight Rep foot. Possible yeah. reptilian, maybe? Po Leathery possibly. skin? Ooh, the Anunnaki, Three steps, though? Will. Three steps? That's, yeah. a, lot. that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a that's. That's a leggy creature. When you're that tall, dude, your gait is fucking, your, your stride is Eight feet strong. tall is tall, but it's not that fucking long to cross the road in three steps. But I remember, mean, it's a country road, Chris. It might not be like a big, you're fat a country two lane. road. 
Yeah. Well, Jesus Christ. <laughs> First off, fat jokes. As far as they go, that was a fucking, that was a doozy. I, well done. I, I well didn't really think that was a fat joke. Yeah, I was I was fucking a around. Fat I always call oh, you. Yeah. Wow. Rob's all sensitive over here. Well, yeah, no, country yeah, no, road. I guess I am a country road. Take me <laughs> home. Unless it's a place I belong. The a fat farm. Lane Thanks, road, Chris. Baby. The place I belong. Hurtful. Well, the, did you see the fat farm? He did. <laughs> <laughs> you just won't stop. You just won't leave oh, me alone. God. Uh, all right, so a country, now. a country road, <laughs> clearly, clearly not a, a, a regular mun- municipal street, if you will. So they're a little We're bit smaller. Still. Three is that's a long three gate. three stride three steps and you do I mean but if he's got a huge gate and he's just walking you know reptilians walk weird dude they don't walk like normal humans they got to fucking stretch it well, out also man. don't forget this motherfucker's gonna have some wings and so maybe that uh, oh. makes your gate even more aerodynamic in the sense that maybe you get a little more I don't know lift for the step He'll, yeah if he was doing flappity flappity moon moon jumpy walks you know what I mean then it's a possibility. Or maybe but that's not described, of, so that's wild speculation. But the gravity of that's Earth true. might not affect it. him the same. Well, fair gravity. enough. You're yeah. right. We, exactly. we could be dealing with the space, a spaceman, space yeah. things, <laughs> spacemen. <laughs> space All right, country road. Let's continue. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you needling <laughs> bastard. <laughs> uh, the creature. The creature never looked at the witness and was only observed from its side. The head appeared to be flat in the front section, then rounded out. This is what the eyewitness had to say. At the top back of the skull, it was like one of those aerodynamic helmets. The top was not quite a point, but it looked like a ridge on the top of its head, end quote. So I assume he means like a bicyclist helmet that sort of curves in the front and tapers at the back. Yeah, that's what I picture. Yeah. The face was flat and the eyes were not clearly defined, but the man thought that they might have been pointed in the corner. The ear that was observed on the left side was long and flat and came back and came up and back and was pointed backwards like a flap, Hmm. like a flap. I'm not sure what that means, but I'm just, I'm seeing like big elephant pointy ears going back to the point of the head, I suppose. Yeah. The, The description continues. The arms were muscular and a little longer than that of a human. The hands looked more like a claw, but the number of fingers was unclear. One physical trait that stood out were the extremely muscular legs. The, <gasps> yeah. is that, does that explain it? Is that explain are three steps to do it? Danzig-esque legs? Like the <laughs> oh Mothman? Yeah. How many dicks does it have? How many? D- yeah, I need to know its dick size immediately. Quick. These are going to remain mysteries. Size I'm afraid, and quantity. Guys. Go. Uh, I just want to get one of those weird inside dicks and quantity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how many inside dicks does it have? I know. How many, how many squirrels does it weigh, and how many cubits are we dealing with here? <laughs> oh my god! How many marons would you give its dick? <laughs> oh, Seven god. out of twelve. <laughs> the witness stated that it was hard to explain the legs. That is. All right. <laughs> but the legs did not move like that of a human, and they looked like they bent backwards. The mm. witness also saw what appeared to be wings on its back, which were tucked into its body, so apparently not doing the flippity flap thing, and okay. the wingtips extending towards the side of its head. Excuse me, with the wingtips extending towards the side of its head. So, real quick, does it have weird backwards dog legs? Well, yeah, I guess so. Maybe okay. it's got All the right. high ankle. Yeah, like you know, like the, the like, dogs that, are known that, for almost like uh, yeah, like that weird backward typical demon leg, I guess. Standard. Uh, well, leg. I mean, <laughs> like fawn or satyr leg. I don't know if it's yeah. a typical demon. Well, I guess it is if you're going like Torg from Manos Hands of Fate. Yeah, where that exactly. poor bastard walked himself into a bad back and unfortunately yeah. taking his own life. So R.I.P. Torg. But oh wow. Jesus. Well, you know, satyr legs they uh, take uh, a right, toll. To fucking bring it down, God. Wow, really? All right. Is that a fat joke? No. Jesus Christ, Mark. <laughs> the With your weird backward legs. <laughs> it's how I get out of everything from now on. Is that a fat joke? Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Fucking the, the wingtips extending toward the side of its head, however, I'm not sure if that means they're like little tiny, like fucking cupid cherub wings where they're just kind of pointing back or yeah i don't know what that means either i'm not sure what that means Does he got some little tiny ass wings is that what you're, is that what you're saying well they don't specifically say i suppose if mm. they really were tiny ass wings they would have mentioned that 
Okay. Well, no, actually, it could be like the gargoyle. You know how sometimes their wings, well, in anime too, wings are drawn and they go up like this. The tips. Right. They come oh, yeah, they have the, that bat out. point at the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then yeah. they yep. curl back down. You're right. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, let's go Sexy with that. Sexy anime then. wings. Okay, cool. He continued. No unusual sounds or smells were noticed during the observation, which was estimated to have been about seven to eight seconds. As the motorist approached the location where the creature entered the woods, it could no longer be seen. The next day, the witness decided to drive back to the location of the encounter to look for any evidence. That's I do that. I wouldn't do it that night, but yeah. The ground conditions were not suitable for tracks and nothing was found. The witness did, however, measure the road sign that the creature had walked in front of. The sign was just over eight feet high and the head of the creature was estimated to have reached about four inches above the sign. Hmm. So nearly eight and a half feet tall. It's pretty bad. Since that initial report I received concerning the strange encounter, Stan Gordon goes on to say, it has been learned that other local residents from the same area also reported seeing a similar unknown creature. Dan Hage, Hageman, I hope I'm saying it right, H-A-G-E-M-A-N, director of B-O-R-U, the Butler Organization of Research on the Unexplained, and you know this fucking county, all 795 square fucking miles of it has got to be a hot spot if they have their own fucking organization of research on the unexplained. Yeah, right. if this is like a votable post where like you're voted the fucking secretary or like oh, that'd the be great treasurer. The, yeah, yeah like, dog catcher. Uh, you are now yeah. the director of the yeah. Boru. Something's going on there for sure. Jesus. So anyway, Dan also received several reports from that same period and general location. The following are some of the BORU summary reports on these incidents. So he just, Gordon at this point, just quotes directly from their reports. March 26, 2011, Keppel's Corner. I assume it's happening in that same basic area, but I didn't do the Google on that one. Two witnesses were driving to Butler when they witnessed a dark tan, eight foot tall winged entity. The face appeared smashed in. It had a muscular body and a head that went to a point. The arms were long and it appeared to have claws for fingers. When it crossed the road, it seemed to lope with each stride. Hmm. The witnesses stopped the car in shock and sat there until another car came by and they had to move. The witness is willing to take a lie detector test to prove what he saw. So that's interesting in that the pushed yeah. in face is very much like the flat face, the pointed head, mm -hmm. um, claws for fingers, uh, eight foot tall, leathery. I mean, it, it, it doesn't make it a fact, but if these people really yeah. were unrelated and had no idea the fact that two people saw this, they either saw an incredible costume and a guy fucking around and probably a pretty dangerous area to do it any place in Pennsylvania and that's wooded you could take a chance on getting shot probably but or no. they saw maybe the same fucking thing it's so, got to be the same thing it fits the description to a friggin t March 2011 East Brady we remember East Brady before that's the other side there's Chicoa I think to East Brady that's the fucking range oh that's where the thing flew yeah that's right okay a witness was riding his motorcycle two miles past a custard stand and saw a large animal. It was bent over as if looking for something. As the witness got to within 75 feet of the creature, it stood up. It was at least eight to nine feet tall, and the arms hung down below its knees. The skin looked like leather, and it was very dark. Its eyes were swept up in the corners, and it had a pointed head. That's fucking pretty spot on. It was very muscular and looked like it had wings on the side of its head. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Weird. Maybe it's the ears. Maybe it's the big pointy ears. I'm assuming it's the ears. Yeah. It's a weird spot for wings. I or mean, it's like fucking Thor cosplay, the, but it's probably Ray ears. <laughs> it's Beta Ray Bill. There you go, Chris. <laughs> oh my God. That'd be awesome. It also <laughs> appeared angry. The creature then bolted into the woods. The witness stated that if anything, it was straight from hell and needed to go back. <laughs> I mean, that's just mean. Like, how do you know? Well, I mean, uh, it does really seem to be an outtake from, I mean, probably one of, I mean, second, obviously, to Dune and Prince of Darkness, one of the most referenced movies, and Mark already called yeah, it no, earlier, is Gargoyles. This thing really looks yeah, like sure. Stan Winston's. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, gargoyle suits from the for sure. you know, late seventies. One of the great made for TV horror films, you know, cheesy as it is, but excellent suits creep the fuck out of, I suppose everyone of our generation, if we saw oh, it yeah. young enough and, uh, and would of this generation too, if they saw it young enough, I imagine. And, and so when I hear this description and obviously these things were supposed to be basically from hell, um, in the movie though, they definitely took a more biological bent to it all. Um, I can see where if you have a, typical judeo-christian upbringing which is most of america and most of americans um where you would associate the diabolical with something that looked like this because there's no other uh, yeah for sure context for it but you're absolutely right i mean it's lumping it in with something just based on it's a fucking appearance and you know you know how we feel about it don't do that shit i mean Ugly things aren't mean necessarily and if it is from hell, why does it got to go back? Like, what if it's just here in a fucking visa and wants to hang out and be cool and check shit out? Yeah, work you know? visa. I mean, yeah, nobody wants to be hell. like the, the guy behind the counter in a porn shop. And indeed, <laughs> I don't think porn shops well, exist anymore, do they? I mean, no, maybe, they do. 100%. No, because you still got to buy like the toys and stuff. I'm about yeah, to say no, with the internet, why would you buy, need to? You can still buy Blu-rays. There's that spot right near the outlet yeah. mall. Nobody wants that job ever. Demon comes in on the work visa. It's like, I'm at home. This is I, fine. And I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to be a dick. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to smoke my fucking, my vape of sulfur and brimstone. And I'm just going to fucking be cool. Called the brimstone vape. Yep. Wearing yeah, a Hawaiian shirt, having favorite, horns, fucking favorite suggesting which, you know, anal gangbang you should, you know, subscribe to like, oh no, that video, not, nah, this one. Yeah. Volume yeah. five. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. Volume Bukaki five. blast off. It's exactly where you need to be. <laughs> I have met some pretty awesome folks actually that work the counter of porn shops and respect to them because yeah. that job cannot be fucking easy. Because being a normal be dude, you're fun. just like, you're like, yo, what up? And you're just cracking jokes and shit. But then there's some people in there that you're like, oh boy. Yeah. Fuck. This is going to get yeah. weird. Do not make eye contact. Do not. Oh, fuck. No, I mean, I, I got don't. Contact. Fucking retail sucks, but that retail really fucking sucks. All right, man. So fucking there it is. Fucking shit. Operation Pitchfork. But we're not done. Oh, no. No, oh, no. Let's, let me take you guys to March 2011, Rimmersburg. Just let that <laughs> let that settle <laughs> for a second. Rimmersburg. Welcome to Rimmersburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, boy. Do what you want. We're not here to judge. Yeah, exactly. Do what you will. We don't care. <laughs> fucking, you're here. Come on. <laughs> <You're>, right. <laughs> that's the fucking worst good motto. Reason. You're, you're, you're here. here. <laughs> Rimmersburg. Welcome. You're here. Nice. <laughs> All right. Two witnesses right. had just left the ice cream stand. Could it be associated with the custard stand? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm like, what terms. is happening? <laughs> is it in a Pennsylvania? Custard? Maybe they call it ice just cream likes custard. Desserts. It came from hell to eat del- desserts. Yeah. Is it like an ice cream stand from hell? There's probably in not Rimmersburg? a lot of ice cream in hell. In all fairness, it wouldn't last very long. For one that's thing, why I came here, dude. It wanted to fucking and why I'm one of those banana split Sunday things and then the fucking dump truck. Remember oh. the dump truck? Oh yeah. hell yes. Oh I love yeah. that. Oh it's too much ice cream though. Even dude, it's fucking ridiculous. Even for me, that's too much goddamn yeah. ice cream, it's and ridiculous. I love my ice cream. So I don't know how close East Brady is to Rimmersburg. I'm not sure if we're dealing with the same dessert stand, frozen dairy dessert stand. Somebody out there will definitely let us know. I will clearly 100% get a message on Instagram about this. I totally want to get ice cream at this place, though, and just look around for fucking tall demons. I'm going to go to the fucking custard stand. Dude, we can do both. Guys, road trip, we can do both. Or if it's one and the same, fuck it. There you go. Two birds, one one Rimmersburg. (laughs) All right, so the two witnesses had just <laughs> left the ice cream stand, headed for <laughs> Rimmersburg, and noticed something crossing the road. They came to within about 35 feet of the creature. They stated that it was at least nine feet tall and had dark brown skin, long arms, and broad shoulders. First time the shoulders have been put into the equation. It had a pointed head for, excuse me, it had a pointed head, flat forehead, and pointed ears, and what appeared to be wings on its back. So uncanny. Uh, all the right. body was extremely muscular and there were four finger like claws on each oh. hand. Well, huh. they're only 35 feet away. So maybe they got the best look. <clears throat> the eyes were squinted, but swept upwards at the corners. As the creature turned, the whole body would turn. The movement of the arms was not normal. The mouth looked like a slit. The wings looked like see-through mesh and resembled the wings on a bat. The claws were black as coal. The witness stated that this thing was anybody Bueller. 
straight from hell. Oh, they got the wow, second right. straight from hell. When you're Holy when when you're in shit. Butler County, you know when things are from Remersburg, and you know yeah. when they're straight from fucking hell. Yeah, they definitely are uh, pigeonholing this thing as being a demon. All right, well, I mean, it classically looks and you know classically looks like one, so I guess you know. All right, so let's just wrap this up, and then we can we can do our little breakdown. There is information coming in, Stan Gordon continues, that a similar creature has been reportedly seen again in the same general areas of Butler County since about mid-July of 2012. Campers and others are rumored to have seen a strange, large, winged creature. That's the end of Stan Gordon's portion. Here I begin. While there's no reason to assume that there is any connection whatsoever between these two creatures, save for the fact that they're both essentially humanoid and have wings, it seems frankly astonishing that this tiny region of the continental United States would, at least temporarily, harbor a pair of their similar ilk within six years of each other. Either way, if you ever find yourself in Butler County, PA, keep your eyes peeled it might just change your life. And so here we have the weird winged things of Butler fucking County. Fucking yeah. straight from hell. All right, man. Well, here we go. Obviously got to start off with the hoax. Yeah. All right. The, the, the tiny fairy thing, I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Cause that just could be clearly something that was just misidentified. Sure. So who, who knows with, with that? Um, but now with this art, a hoax, um, this obviously is a prosthetic suit that could be built and someone could be running around and cosplaying in this fucking thing because that's what people do. There are a lot of talented costume makers out there. Yeah. I mean, some, I mean, I know there's scare tactics. I know I'm sure that shows off the air by now or, or and various other things where people that are professional make, um, incredible yeah. suits to scare people in like a prank like way. And, you know, fine, even though that would certainly end the friendship in my fucking, in my book. But, um, but there's a lot of very talented homespun artists. I mean, hell, we know a lot of them. Um, we have ma- listeners, yeah, that are uh, yeah, yeah, for amazing sure. FX artists. Totally. So, I mean, if you're testing this out, this makes sense. And so I've got to go back to just what, you know, something I read literally just moments ago. And that is, uh, um, they are describing the same thing, the dark brown skin, the broad shoulders, the flat forehead, the pointed head. Um, all of these things, the four finger claw. So right now you're thinking, oh, it's consistent, biologically consistent with the other eyewitnesses. This, the eyes were squinted. Okay. No problem. As the creature turned, the whole body would turn. That hmm. smacks of either weird biology or a solid piece costume that really hmm. can't move. No right. back. The yeah. movement of the arms was not normal. Well, that, that just has to sit there. I don't know what you can do with it. I mean, again, if it's a costume, it might not be normal, but its yeah. physiology might be weird. The okay. mouth looked like a slit. Well, maybe you didn't have a chance to design a mobile mouth that moved to the yeah. lips and then, you know, building monster dentures or whatever else. Sure. The wings looked like see-through mesh and resembled hmm. the wings of a bat. Well, it could be ma- right. bat design, but mesh, see-through mesh, that's odd. Do they mean like... It's just so thin and membranous that the light comes through it. And so, oh yeah, fucking wow, weird bat wings. But when, when you say mesh to me, that seems like maybe something that a very talented, but, but perhaps not independently wealthy special effects guy or or gal, you know, would have limitations in the material they could use. Yeah. So I'm not trying to be ultra skeptical because i love the fact that so many people saw i think people really did see something but as you were saying mark i do not think we can take off the table that this might not have been an excellently orchestrated though foolhardy hoax and as far as the height goes that's very easily achievable with painter stilts we've been to plenty of cons where people are cosplaying with amazing costumes and they are on painter stilts and you could not even fucking and then you can get that back swooping ankle effect that oh, you one of the eyewitnesses to, oh, described. Oh shit! It would not be oh. easy. It yeah. would take a lot of practice. Also, okay. this thing never fucking flew. No, no, I'm not saying it has to having... fly, but if it flew just once, I'd be like, "All right, all that shit's out." Because if it, that yeah, actually right. happened, <clears throat> now I'm still not saying I'm 100 percent on board that it's a hoax. Uh, no, I'm just I saying you to have be. to entertain that. Yeah. you know, between the custard stand and Rimmersburg. <laughs> There's there some, some really talented dude or, or, yeah, or, or, or a, lady who's just was out there fucking around. 
some and fucking started group of war. Cool, just a group of fucking cool dudes being like, we're going to scare some people. And they got their fucking like, oh, come on, Ted. And they got the suit on. They're fucking walking. Well, and yeah. Doing their thing well, and scaring the fuck I mean, out we of talked about crop circles earlier. Like some people spent time doing this. Yeah. Like hours, hours oh, and yeah. hours overnight. Just in pitch fucking blackness. around in the field. Yeah. Yeah. Doing designs, designing it and how they're going to create amazing so. works of, well, you know, destructive, but, but beautiful art. And also, too, yeah. this this is 2011, so we're not talking like 1953. We're not no. talking about an era where this is not achievable, especially by 2011. 100% this could be done by yeah. somebody. And we're yeah, not talking an there. era when yeah. who would who would put Chesty Morgan's knockers on a Sasquatch outfit, a la, you know, Pat, Patterson right, Gimlin. Patterson Gimlin, yeah. Which, yeah. I mean, right, you know, so- it can still go either way on, but it seems like that's an odd detail for the 60s. It's 2011. You know, you can really do a lot of things. So, yeah. all right. So that's there. You have to acknowledge that it's a acknowledge real possibility. Yeah. If but, it's not that, what oh, the fuck else well. could we be dealing with? All right. The first thing, obviously, the demon. Some a lot sort of people of thought demon, so. <laughs> which, eh, I don't know, man. I hate putting things into a fucking demon box because we don't know shit about demons. We have no fucking idea. Technically, so, we know a ton more about demons than we do interdimensional beings. And you're I mean, always willing to open that box. Right. But I mean, just kind of like the demons of fucking devil swamps, you know, that came out of that fucking cool bat wing oh, fucking thing. Like, eh, I don't know. Is it a fu- some sort of alien? Is it classically something that somebody obviously would be describing as a demon? It doesn't necessarily mean it's from hell, from the devil, part of the fucking legion. It's just could be part of the legion. I don't know. Some weird. <laughs> I mean, like they'd be like, part of the legion. Like, if uh, they'd be like someone would see this, like, like, like the fucking scape or swamp creature and be like, it's a demon. Well, no, it's a fucking weird swamp creature. It's not from hell. It's just some weird fucking creature. Well, it's sort of decorated exactly like shit from like the book of Revelation, scorpion tails and fucking yeah. crowns and mayhem. Yeah, yeah. Gener- generally, biologically, nothing on earth like has that. Right, has four. No, nothing does. Stands up, has no. is humanoid, and right. has fucking wings like yeah. that, and, and is that big. True. I guess I'm trying to cover up for my lack of demon knowledge. I don't know how they work. <laughs> fucking demons. I mean, how do nobody they does, but they're, yeah. they're always, I mean, that's how they are portrayed. They look like right. us, right? Maybe, mm-hmm. but they have an animal fucking head. Right. right. Or whatever. Wings possibly tits. Possibly not tits. <laughs> True. Fucking wings. Always an option. Horns. Sometimes who never take the teats tits. off the table. <laughs> right. I mean, that's all there. That's the only reference point there is for something like this. Yeah. All right. So well, it could be in, if, yeah. you know, if, if, uh, you know, do the Judeo Christian perspective holds true, it could be a totally. denizen of the dark side there. It could be an extraterrestrial. You can't take that off the table because 100%. fuck, I mean, no one can say what things from other planets look like. And maybe they look like something that just terrifies us as they so often do. Right. Demon or, you know, weird spider crab like in the Garson invaders or who the fuck knows. Oh, that's right. There was no sighting of a UFO, but then that's that terrible paradox. Just because somebody didn't see a UFO taking off or landing doesn't mean it didn't happen. Right. There's it's the true. shredding of the true, veil. True. In Butler County, if there's oh, one man. place that seems to be like fucking the Point Pleasant of fucking Pennsylvania, it's Butler County. They have their own goddamn paranormal research bureau. Or, yeah. you know, apparently, according to Stan Gordon, tons of creatures are seen there. And within 10 miles of the local custard stand, <laughs> fucking it's demons know, galore right? and, 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 and squirrel bait moth fairies. Be, so between the custard stand and the ice cream stand, shit gets real fucking weird. <laughs> like, you don't want to fucking be between those two because you never know. I want to think it's like with the desserts. That's what, dude, maybe it's like a rivalry. Maybe there's like some weird rivalry. And if there's some sort of like wizards, they're fucking just doing like dueling battles and conjuring creatures to fucking. Oh, you just threw me When you said weird rivalry, desserts. I thought, all right, between cryptids, between aliens. And then you no. said exactly what I should have known wizards, you were going to say. Dude. Wizards. The dude, Pennsylvania wizards. Yeah. 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 Dude, no, I mean, there's shit. Like, what there's is, a lot of occult practice, obviously, there as there is everywhere else. But I mean, there's. <laughs> Like a lot of what's the early uh, European influence yes. magic that was, you I, know, I can't think used. of what the, I can't think of what the fuck it is, but yeah, there's some weird like fucking magic thing that happens out there, especially like in pen. Like, uh, isn't don't they it, like paint like fucking crazy symbols on barns and shit? Yes, yes, they do. That's what I'm saying, dude. This is a typical fucking ice cream based wizard battle. Ice cream based going wizard battle. down, yep. dude. In Butler County, who's got the better mm. fucking custard? I, 
you go. Isn't it like the Hatfield and the McCoys, but it's fucking custard and ice cream, and it's like yes. a pumpkin head, and somebody summoned one. <laughs> yes, to, to fuck fucking over the other it. one. Oh, and, it's just and, like, you, and nah. you know, like the delightful custard fairies. They like the sweet, oh. the simplicity, the well blended. It's homemade. It's homespun. They just fly around with their fucking hot squirrel bods and, and glowing and doing their thing. And then, of course, the demons of the soft serve ice cream, which is just garbage and full of air and hate and, you know, whatever <laughs> pollutants. Whoa. Sorry, pollutants. I'm not trying to throw all ice cream under the bus. I love ice cream, of course. Apparently, I'm on Team Custard all of a sudden. I don't know why, but. Yeah, it's better. I like it better. But, you know, I've heard people, like, argue about frozen yogurt, V, whatever. And so I can totally see wizards getting, especially if they own the shops, if they're f- trying to franchise. Yeah. And whoever fucking makes more money gets yeah. to open up outside of Butler County. You can't you gotta, you gotta spread the magic, something. spread yeah. the flavor. Dude, you cannot attack a man's fucking ability to support his family and feed his 14 fucking kids. Not without getting a nine-foot demon on your ass. You're, you're going to get a fuck. You're asking for a fucking demon summoning from some weird fucking... A uh, weird occult practice happening there in the yeah. fucking Pennsylvania fucking this, countryside. It's old Pennsylvania Dutch magic. Yes, exactly. I really think it is sense. too. I think Chris nailed it. Actually, I think it's what it really is. Called. Yeah, we don't know shit about that. I mean, we're monster <laughs> alien guys. We don't know fuck about magic. But yeah, no. There's definitely stories I've read too about like like Chris was saying, Hatfield and McCoy type things. Families throwing hexes at each other. Yeah, and not yeah. fucking around. Um, Why can't it involve ice cream, demons, and fairies? Yeah, fuck yeah. So back to the fairy real quick here. Um, okay, possible theory with the fairy. Ooh, what if this is a baby fucking demon? Ah, it's a baby I didn't demon. see that coming, did you? Nope, gotcha. Well, actually, no. I did. I mean, gotcha. I was kind Big of considering surprise. what if it is a breeding ground? What if that's Ooh. where they come to hatch? It's a spawning ground. This thing's here. Maybe it's so weak and bobbling around and like faltering on its, you know, the side of the road, because much like when a, a salmon, you know, does that horrific fucking swim up river, it's the last thing it does. It gives birth and dies. And that's it. It's like the last glorious movement of its life. And then the the symphony begins again with its progeny. Maybe these things come here and turn into like dried husks. They look like leaves. They dissolve quick. Nobody fucking finds them. They come here, they have little baby fairy things. They throw their eggs in a pot at somebody's deck, not a porch. They would not <laughs> lay their babies on a porch. No, they, they hope class. nobody comes around and kicks it, but you know, that's a chance you take. Hey, what are you going to do? It's the human race. And then that's fucking when they hatch, they blossom mm. out of these, you know, sultry looking fucking squirrel sized butterfly girls yeah. or boys. And then they flutter off into the woods where they go to the next dimension and live their cycle until they come back to breed and die. I mean, it makes sense, honestly. <laughs> it's it, not as far cool as, as the, the ice cream wizard war of fucking, fucking 20, uh, 11. The, the fucking cycle yeah. of weird life where they have to just give birth to this thing. I mean, but, you know, who knows? Maybe they just drop their eggs and they continue on. They're like, there you go. Good luck. And the thing wakes up and fucking flies away. That's and true, too. It, it just continues. It just I don't all, I don't think they're related, actually. Yeah, no, me I don't feel I like they are. They're just I think fucking, the other dude, like, LARPs some sort of fey larping yeah, group does, and he because sure. if he was out like singing bard music and by the river and hearing yeah. music and <laughs> and then all of a sudden he sees a fairy it's like all right dude like, I, I agree with chris in the sense that that <laughs> no really, me too. he definitely know, listens to blind guardian for sure there are definitely <laughs> no people that would have I mean, edited I too, that part out fairy. because Same. you know they just would be like oh just tell what he saw don't talk about like his, you know, his conversations with trees, which I've had to, so I'm not here to judge. Just fucking <laughs> edit that part out. But the fact is, he wasn't all eight people. Yeah, true, true, very true. Now, now they might have been like minded. They're old friends. Maybe they all were. You know, it's his LARP. It's his LARPing group. Yeah. Totally. But they all I saw mean, it. So, all right, let's just assume that they really all to the to the last <laughs> believe they saw a fairy. What? biological thing in this world and you know great none of us are entomologists um could be a giant moth-like thing that has a distinctly feminine figure with a humanoid head um and nothing can kind of hover in the air for a few seconds without a working sh- it uh a sugar glider all right all right sugar glider. all right see all right you're trying you, I, they, I they, don't they, don't, so. they don't launch and they can't they fly don't launch, i thought like, they, I thought they, no, they glide launch. dude they glide they don't they don't, spot, they're not ground spot. air don't they, they don't no, launch don't they, up like, yeah but they like jump from shit don't you're just they? not even listening to what i'm saying yeah no like don't they jump high perch glide down don't die that's literally the full gist full stop of a fucking sugar glider 
No, they're not like a rocket. Yeah, <laughs> they, they don't they, shoot up. I mean, That's cool what I'm saying. They, yeah. they don't hover <laughs> mid there showing off their sweet curves and their humanoid head. I think I that's just, part of the problem, the way he explains it. It's not It's not like- Did you guys find exp- the photo yet? Look at the photo. No, It'll I help didn't. you. Yeah, Butler let me, County Ferry. You'll find okay, it. I don't think I need to. I think I know exactly what it's going to look like. <laughs> I'm going to look it up right I'm now pretty, for myself. I'm pretty I'll show positive. <laughs> yeah, put it on your phone and just and put it up the webcam so Chris All can right. see. So yeah, Chris, please please continue with that thought there. But yeah, no, I just I feel like I, I mean he's clearly just the way he explains it and it is is almost I don't know reverential in a way, but it's also oh, lot, absolutely it's just lots of adjectives and things are always it's constantly beautiful and so constantly let's let's start off with and, uh, in the summer of two thousand five. I had a very unusual sighting, yet it was almost something of a blessing to witness parentheses yeah. especially having such high hopes for such an existence myself and an entire group of people witnessed a fairy close up yeah. nobody knew what to say so i mean you know for full disclosure now just because he believes or wanted to believe in fairies doesn't mean he didn't see one in fact that may have been why a fairy chose to disclose itself yeah. to a group of people that included him i totally. mean but it does well, not help yes. an objective mind to believe that this was a paranormal account. No, I know. It sounds like I'm shitting. I'm not shitting on it. It's just that, I mean, that description is just really like, when you really are looking for something, you're going to find it. That's like, you know what I mean? And here's the other thing. We don't know really if the seven or eight other people plus his ex-girlfriend, um, a hundred percent agreed. It was a fucking fairy. You know, he says before we all just decided to accept what we saw a fairy, he could be, he definitely, I mean, he was willing to report this. He was willing to, you know, answer questions a few days later from, uh, Stan Gordon. All of these are good things, positive things. Thank you, Jonathan Fennell. But on the other hand, we don't have access to anybody else. He, and he's excited. So maybe he finally like browbeat him like, yeah, maybe it was a fucking fairy. I don't know. I I, I just can't tell. And he's like, we all agreed it was a fairy. We don't know because True. we weren't there. And the ex-girlfriend and the other friends aren't coming forward to say, holy fuck. Like if three of them came out and were just like, yeah, this is some shit. You know, I like that. He said it resembled a giant moth or bat at first. Um, and then it had yeah. like kind of a human head and that it had to unfurl in this kind of gloriously cinematic manner. Well, that's, that's, um, <laughs> that's it has part to. of the, yeah, yeah. It's, it's part of, like, it's part of what it is, the fantasy joy of it all. But, but then when, when he was talking with Gordon, he's like, I don't know if it's interdimensional. I don't know if it's fey. I don't know if it's fucking, you know, something biological, but it looked like a goddamn fairy to me. Maybe yeah. that's him kind of, um, uh, trying to dial it back a little from what he wrote on Phantoms and Monsters. But uh yeah, I mean but like be. I say, just because you believe in Bigfoot doesn't mean you can't see one. It just makes it harder for the rest of the world to believe what you say. Never yeah, take yeah a, for sure. I, never take a tulpa off the table. Never ever. If you have a group of people believing in something that hard, give it a couple of decades, maybe one one appears. There you go. Right. The power <laughs> okay. of positive thinking. <laughs> Looking so you saw you saw the picture. Just no, a, I just, I have fucking googled the fuck out of this thing, and I put in Butler County Ferry, and like nothing is coming up. So if you could just like email it to us at some point in the future, and we can check it out. Just um, imagine um, a silhouette of a, a attractive figure superimposed yeah. on a fucking Luna moth wing or something with antennas. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe he would very well. Di- I mean, obviously, we've talked about the fate before. It, okay, so yeah, sure as shit. If this is a thing that we're fucking living alongside, and one just happens to pop out of your fucking deck, not porch, then uh, I guess that's a thing. Like, you kind of have to live with it. It just how things roll, or yeah, not. It, it, it is. <laughs> or not. I mean, or I, not. It, all right. So let's let's just be fundamental here. It's not okay. probably cryptozoological. No, yeah, you'd I know mean, you'd see more. Well, the than way one. he's explaining it, no, right. I mean, if it's, it's a misidentified insect, maybe, right. But you'd still see more than one. They wouldn't yeah. be the only ones to see a white furred, phosphorescent green, squirrel-sized totally. mega moth that looks uncannily like a tiny human being. And if they discovered something like that, and it is the sexy moth as uh, Ford described. Well, the entomology world is going to be a buzz and it's going to explain a lot of fucking fairy sightings away. It's going to make a lot of sense zoologically. It's going to disappoint yeah, a lot sure. of uh, Fortians. But but I, I, I don't think either of these things are cryptozoological. 
No, I don't either. They both could be extraterrestrial. And it really might be, um, I I mean, I I hate to bite your rhymes, Mark, but it really could be the thinning of the veil. Like if this is a place where shit can come through that ought not be here, Butler County seems to, Butler County seems to be the place. I fucking love it, dude. It's our new Ohio. Yeah. Uh, you, if it's a weird window area between the custard stand and the fucking ice cream stand, there you go. Or once again, if, if it's a weird if, wizard if between battle. Between the custard stand, Rimmersburg, and fucking East yeah. Gedry or whatever the fuck it is, forms a triangle and all times three points form a triangle. Yeah. <laughs> then we've got a phenomenon on our hands. Dude, it's I mean, yeah, it's, it's not far away. I mean, it's it's just hours away. It's not yeah, it true. really is. And it's not like these us. sightings aren't relatively recent. I mean, within two decades, within a decade. It, well, just over a decade now, but but close. Yes, and this right, we're is going actually, for ice cream, boys. Yeah, and we're not going <laughs> to piss I'm off in. any wizards. We're not going to get no. hexed. We're going to fucking. We're going to look at the road. We're going to fucking try to find some shit. We're going to even see if we can find the porch. Let's fucking contact Jonathan Fennel. We'll do our best. I'll, I'll reach I mean, out to I'm Stan in. Gordon. We'll we'll interview these people. Let's just fucking do it. Look, by the time that we do this, all right, I'm going to have my new truck. We'll go on a fucking road trip. We're going to go hang out with Cole Harold, fucking rip some beers, go figure this out. And while we're there, we can research the Pennsylvania Dutch witchcraft, which is, Chris was correct, is what what it's called. So we have a whole fucking weekend planned, guys. And you now have a reason to live, Mark. You were dying at the beginning (laughs) of this pod, and I see the light in your eyes. No, You're a survivor now. It's for custard fairies and fucking mayhem. I'm really hoping I'm not coming down with COVID because my legs are killing me and I definitely feel like shit. So, yeah, <laughs> so you, I'm really you might, hoping. You might get the vid, buddy, but you're gonna you're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. I believe oh, in you. Shit. It just sounds right. like you are, but you're you're getting the you're getting the 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 beat up version. Luckily, it wasn't the first version. Right, right. I, I don't know. I mean, I've thankfully, you know, knock on wood, have dodged it, you know, thus far. And uh, my daughter yeah. obviously did not. My wife clearly did not. And then as of today, my son did not. But fingers crossed, we're holding out. We'll see what happens. I'm just going to keep hydrated and, you know, maybe crush a couple Coors Lights. Silver bullets kill werewolves. There's nothing saying that they can't kill COVID. So I'm here to research that. And That's pop my some job vitamin C with that if you would. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat, 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 get a couple grapefruit in me. <laughs> I'm fucking good to go. So, God damn it, dude. Some blood oranges. Oh, thank you all so much for joining us to the Kryptonite Podcast. Oh, geez, the closing of the show that I always forget about. Heather Space, get yourself some t shirts. Ha, T Public. Yeah. Wow. Fucking do it. Um, we will have some new designs. If they are not already up by the time this episode's come out, this episode comes out, they will be up very shortly. So be on the lookout for that. We got some pretty cool fucking new merch coming from our boy yep. Bobby. Our boy Bobby. Yep. Uncle, Uncle Rob. Got some Uncle Rob originals. Yeah, going they're up collaborations, there. though. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, well, I, I did some are. doodling, but we all contributed to the design. I think it's fucking awesome. Full respect, man. Chris came out with a fucking blowout idea. Yeah, I just great. turned it. I just tur- I created what I normally do—a fucking misfit. Yeah. Shirt. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, Chris yeah, yeah. fucking. Yeah. Thankfully, Chris came in and fixed it. So be sure to check that out. There's always sales going on. Check the socials. We post up when those happen. It's mostly on Instagram. I post that. So be sure to check that out. Uh, the socials, the Instas, and the Twitters, and the Facebooks. Yes, we are there. We are doing it. Shoutouts to our Facebook fan group. Thank you all so very much. The mod admins holding it down over there. If you are on the Facebooks, pop into the fan group check it out it's super cool there's a bunch of fun stuff always posted so go over there and do that uh patreon is a thing that we got patreon.com slash kryptonaut podcast one dollar is the shout out and one bonus audio five dollars is the shout out in the no more than four occasionally six possibly seven <laughs> fucking bonus audios there's a whole how frisky ton of we shit. get we are creeping up, I think, on like episode 100 for that. So that's like, nuts. Do yeah, we, that's can we technically count that? I mean, we can't technically count it, but does that mean we've, we've done well over 300? I mean, yeah, because I think currently right now for the regular pod we are sitting at, this is episode 226. So we're, yeah, the last, well, the Patreon that came out yesterday is going to be uh, 95. The so fuck it is. Yeah. Damn. Oh my God. Yeah. That's that, if nuts. You, if you actually think about all that content, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's yeah. a fucking ton of time. Content right there. machines. Yeah. It man, is. Just keep pumping I it do out. love, though. Pumping I mean, it. it's funny. If you hear this, anyone, like, there's someone out there. This is bound to be the first time they've ever heard us. We're sloppy as shit, and that's part of the fun. That's who we are, and, and I wouldn't change it for the world. But boy, are we slapdash in the best way on Patreon. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, definitely. The seat you should... of Yon Pants. Yes. Oh, oh man, God, I wrong. love it. Every week, I just grab that parachute, hope to fuck it opens up. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, it, it always matter. does. No, you oh, can skip always to does. a stop. We're immortal <laughs> squirrel on suits. Patreon. Squirrel suits. Oh, God. So there it is. That's all we got for the outro. Thank you all so very much. And we're talking to you soon. Out of here. Ice cream road trip, guys. Oh, I'm feeling dude. it. Custard City, The weather's going to break. Herald, we'll get our masks. A bunch of beers. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get a posse together. Why not? Yeah. Fireworks. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, That's how you attract the demons. Yes. N- ninja supplies. Oh, my God. We're oh, getting God, so many yeah. stars. Oh, th- dude. Th- That's no, the only way. That, yeah. No, we're going to practice fireworks. our throwing star skills while we're eating the custard. They have that fireworks and karate supply store in Pennsylvania. It's yeah. the only way to fight it. I hope it's still open. Oh, my God. Oh, I know, me too. We're gonna make, Fuck, I'm going to make a Patreon video out of this. Maybe oh, a feature length sure. film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a three-hour oh film. God. It's going to be like the fucking Snyder Cut of Justice League, but it's just us crushing beers and throwing shit at fireworks. There it is. Perfect. Oh, all right. America. Oh, sounds, God sounds bless awesome. you. Uh, One and we'll all. see you. Oh, <laughs> my